Hey everybody, we're going to modify an image by actually putting in window light atmosphere and show you a cool technique in doing that. And we're going to go from this to this. Are we ready for this? Let's do it! Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and working as a photo artist, creatively thinking out of the box. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our program. Now we're gonna add some atmosphere window light and uh, I'll show you a really cool technique, but if you stay to the end, I wanna show you how you can actually convert um, this atmosphere into an overlay so you can use this in the future on other projects. So let's dive in here. And uh, if you're new to the channel, if you can please do me a favor, and that is uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell the next time I upload a video, you'll get notified. Also, uh, please like the video. It helps with the algorithm uh, on uh, YouTube. So it would push this information out to other people that have similar interests. Also, uh, again, I want to thank uh, the people that um, have been buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com uh, forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Uh, that will be right here at the bottom of the screen. So you can see that. The, all the links on this will be in the description for you guys. Okay, let's jump into the program here. And that is, I'm going to start out with a stock image. And obviously to do something like this, we need a um, an image that has window uh, light that would be coming uh, through. And uh, we can do some really creative things with this. But let me... Um, Make this a little bit smaller. And in fact, I'm going to move this around so we can see this. Now I wanna do a before and after here. So Control J or Command J in a Mac will duplicate uh, the layer quickly for us. And uh, obviously the window uh, light is coming from the left and it's gonna come into the right. So here's a concept how to do this. And again, if you stay toward the end of this, I'm gonna show you how you can actually convert this to an overlay and use this on future projects. And you can actually modify the overlay and, and again, create a whole bunch. You could buy overlays if you want, which I have in the past, but uh, I've been making my own and I've got a full collection uh, of stuff. And this is one of the techniques I use. So let me just um, talk about this technique. I know there's other ways we can do this. This is just one of many ways of creating this. Because a lot of times when I do stuff, uh, sometimes I get a comment, well, couldn't you have done it this way or that way? And the answer is, well, yeah, uh, I have to pick a way to do it. So um, I pick usually my favorite way of doing things, but always remember, it's not the only way of doing stuff. Okay, so let's start out with analyzing the window and how this light would come in. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a blank layer. So I'm going to come down here in layers and just click on the plus down, down here to create a new layer. And then what I'm going to do is go to my toolbar and on the left side here, where we see the lasso tool, if I click down, we get a little flyout menu, and I'm going to choose the polygonal lasso tool. tool. And uh, when I choose that, I'm just going to analyze the window. And all this could be changed later. I'll show you how to do that. But I'm going to look at this and say, okay, the light would probably be coming from right here, down across like this. And I'm just going to come like this. And then maybe we'll cut it off about right there. And we're going to go up the wall right there. And again, any of this could be adjusted. Okay, with that selected, what I want to do now to create that light coming through in atmosphere to emphasize this, I'm going to go to the filter drop down menu. And I'm going to choose a category called render. And on the flyout menu, I'm going to choose clouds. Now, when I choose this, uh, I wish we had a live preview on this. So sometimes it's a hit and miss process. But with this selected, I'm going to go to the uh, filter drop down menu again. And I'm going to choose blur. And I'm going to choose a radial blur. Now, when I choose this, uh, I want to make sure it's set to zoom and not spin. So it's set to zoom. You can do good quality, best quality. I'll, I'll put it on best. And then the amount as I move this, well, I don't see anything happening. And that's 
you know, the problem with this is just sort of a, you know, trial and error. I wish we had a live preview on this, but I'm going to go over here, click down and drag to the upper left-hand corner because the light is coming from here, from the left side moving to the right. And then I'm going to move this up to about, let's say 40 um, or this 41, but uh, again, I'm sort of guessing at this. And if not, I'll undo it and do it again. So I'm going to click on OK to accept that. So let it render out. And I'll just accept that. But again, if you, you didn't like what you got, then I would just do Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo and then retry a different setting. You might, might want to go more or you might want to go less on that. Now, I'm going to deselect my marching ant. So that's going to be <clears throat> Control D, Command D on a Mac. And then what I want to do is I would like to apply a blur to this. And before I do that, I'm going to go to the drop down menu here to show you that I'm going to add screen as a blending mode. So we can actually see this. And there's my before and after. But very harsh edges here. So I'm going to go to filter drop down menu. And I'm going to go to blur again as a category. And I'm just going to choose Gaussian blur. And Gaussian blur again, you're just going to play this. Um, I'm sitting at about, eh, let's. I'll go about 45 or so. Again, judgment call by you because it's based on size and resolution of the image. And I will click on OK. Now, the cool thing about this is that we could actually pull down the opacity of this so it's not that strong or pull it up. But before I fine tune this, I would like to use this in the future. And I don't want to walk through these steps again. So what I'd love, love to do, and this is the little bonus here, I want to convert this into an overlay so I can use this in the future. So here's what I have to do. I'm going to click on the layer below and I'm going to add a new layer and I need to fill that with black. So control delete fills it in with white. Alt delete will fill that in with black. And I need that to be black to create an overlay. You just got to make sure that your chip colors here were at uh, black and white. Now that I have that set, I'm just going to save that. So I'm going to go to File, Save a Copy, and uh, maybe I'll just call this and make sure it's a JPEG. So I'm choosing a JPEG there. I'll just call this um, Window Room Light, or you, can, you know, it could be Atmosphere Light or whatever. And I'm going to save this. And we'll just, yeah, highest quality, click on OK. OK, with that done, let me turn this. Um, I don't need this layer right here, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to hide the very top one for right now. I'll come back to this a little bit later. But just to show you now, if I didn't have that top layer uh, made and I go, oh, cool, I know I have an overlay that has window light in it. So that's all I have to do is go to my open dialog box. So I'm just going to do Control-O or Command-O on a Mac. And this is my overlay I created. So when I click on uh, Open to accept that, and then with my Move tool activated, just click and drag this up to my tab, which I can't see right now. So let's get my tabs here. There's my tab. So I'm going to click and drag down. And I'll reposition this. Now, I know this is going to fit perfect, but again, if this was a different aspect ratio, different size image, Control T or Command T on a Mac, and that would allow you to resize this based on your needs. And then also, um, I would you know change that to screen blending mode to get the effect. And um, just a little tip and suggestion. Let's say it's a different window or different window size, but you wanted to use this and it just doesn't fit right. Well, we can mask out what doesn't fit right, but we can also do this to do a little bit of tweaking. And that is if I hold the control key down, and that would be um, command, I believe, yeah, option, <laughs> uh, alt, option, yeah, uh, control, command on a Mac. So I'm holding control on a PC, command on a Mac. I'm going to go to a corner node right here, and it, this is actually called skewing. So I could actually fine tune this to the uh, you know a different size if I wanted to do that and readjust things based on you know my needs the angle that kind of stuff but uh, I'm going to undo that right now let's get back to normal right there and uh, just enter in the keyboard to accept that so now that that is set um, again I could use this that I just created 
manually in screen mode, pull down the, you know, the screen, whatever I want it to be, what percentage versus 100%. Uh, I'm going to hide that. We'll just use the overlay. So the bonus here is creating an overlay so we can reuse this in future projects. Now, again, I might want to push that down a little bit. But for visual for right now, uh, I'm going to push that up. And I'd like to maybe uh, colorize this to create a mood uh, in this image. And uh, so I might want this to be a, a sort of a cool uh, atmosphere window light coming through. I might want this to be warm. There's different ways we can actually do this. So today I'm just going to come down to here in our layers um, uh, panel and just pick the, uh, I call it Oreo cookie dipped in milk icon and choose. Um, well, let's see, what can we choose? Uh, how about a photo filter? So I'm going to apply a photo filter on this. And with the photo filter, uh, if I push this way up. We can see it's affecting everything, and I don't want it to affect everything. I just want it to affect the overlay. So I need to create what's called a clipping mask to clip this information to the layer below. You could do a right mouse click in the gray area here and go about halfway down to choose create a clipping mask. You could hold the Alt key down option on a Mac, hover between the two layers. You get a little icon there, click on it. I'm releasing that clipping mask. And I'm going to activate it again. So a couple different ways of doing that. Now I could pull this down based on my needs. But notice as, as I push this up, this is only affecting the light there. So again, if I go over here, there's different built-in, like uh, how about a cooling filter? Again, I'm over-exaggerating this so we can see this on the internet, on the videos. But again, you can adjust the intensity of that based on your needs. But this is a relatively warm image. So I'm going to go over here and choose the warm filter right there. And again, this is very subjective. It's based on your needs. So there's a before, after, before, after. Hopefully that uh, shows up. Now, you could go to this color swatch if you wanted to and pick whatever you want as a color. I wish there was a, a live. Well, there's a live preview to a degree. You have to uh, select a color and then let go. And then you, you could see that... Um, it's changing. Let me get a little bold here so we can see the changing colors. But I like, you know, doing the preset right here. So I'll go to filter there and just choose a warming filter. Okay, so that's applied. Now I'm going to come back down to here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to apply a, uh, a mask to this. So with this selected, I'm going to come down here to add a mask in layers. I'm going to come to the, my, my uh, gradient tool here in the toolbox, click on that. And I don't know, you know what yours is set to right here, but I don't want this gradient. So I'm going to go to this little drop down menu. And under basics here, you'll see a basic uh, category. I'm going to choose this one that has the uh, opaque pixels over there. That's what I'm going to choose. And with a click and drag motion, I'm going to start down here. And I'm going to click and drag up like this. And what I like about uh, th this new enhancement that we've had for a while in Photoshop, if I click on the image and I go back to this, this is non-destructive if I go to the mask right here. And I could readjust this based on my needs just by moving these sliders around. So I might move that down to about like, I don't know, right there. And again, very subjective. Um, I'm pushing this a bit so we can see this on the video and let's just you know pretend I, I like that okay so back over here uh, again the very top layer where we have the the uh, color grading and again optional right here I might come to the video let me uh, or this uh, image I should say let me zoom in on this a little bit and I'm gonna go to our mask right here and I'm going to grab my paintbrush so B for brush and it looks like it's set to about 30% opacity. I'll accept that. And I'm just going to click and drag in here and just add maybe in the highlight areas. I just want to add a little bit more um, of the original image to come back, maybe not 100%. And again, I'm just, you could cherry pick this based on your needs. So you can see um, before, after on this, before, after, 
And even the color grading, if you want to go up there, and again, very subjective on, on what you want to do right there. So again, I'm going to come down here and maybe push this down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too intense for me. But uh, again, I want to make sure this does show up on the YouTube video. So there's before and after, before and after. And then playing with this is it's really it's up to you. Um, an example, I'm at the very top here of my stack. Uh, I'm going to do the visible stamp layer. So again, shift control alt E on my keyboard to do that. There'd be shift, uh, shift command option E on a Mac to do the visible stamp layer. I'm just going to go to a blending mode and I'm just playing with this right now. I'm just adding a little bit more drama to this. Pull this back a little bit. Um, you know, based on my needs and there's a before after on that. And uh, again, this is what I started with. This is what I ended up with. Again, so very, uh, again, subjective on how you want to, uh, you know, tweak and modify this. But hopefully you learned something here. And uh, I think it's really cool that we can actually create our own overlays that we can use on future projects. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate, please uh, like the video, subscribe if you have not, hit that notification bell. And uh, if you're learning anything, you'd like to uh, you know, help to support the channel, uh, consider going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. That link should be right here at the very bottom. If you have any questions, uh, on issues and stuff like that, please uh, email me uh, personally at uh, stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Again, that should be in the video here and it'll also be in the show notes. All right. So with that out of the way, till next time, let's get that camera out and let's start creative, uh, start some creative process until we meet again. See ya.